Good evening, everybody. And it's um, Wellness Wednesday once again here with Dr. Sharon, Nurse Page, and entrepreneur Walt Kaminsky. Um, how are you both doing tonight? We're doing fantastic. Nice. Paige? I'm very grateful that I am off of work tomorrow. <laughs> Good. That was that was my watch was thinking I was talking to it. So, oh, uh -huh. um, did so, you rename your watch page? Can you imagine every time I uh, I think of page, it's going to talk all day long now. <laughs> um, so tonight it is the um, beginning of the holiday season coming up, right? Our first holiday, technically, that kicks off the fall season is Halloween. It's just several days away, and we started thinking about you know. Why do people struggle through the holiday seasons? Um, and what is the struggle? Um, and then for me, I'm going to share a little bit about my past experience and what it was like. A lot of it was just being mindless, but um, we're also going to go through each week for the next four to six weeks. We're going to talk about the struggle through the holiday season, um, but each week talking about a different habit that we live by. And so we live by six, what we call macro habits. And so each week we're going to apply our principles of a macro habit into the process of getting through the holiday season um, in a pleasant, happy, and healthy way, because yes, that is possible. Um, just as a background, just in my experience, I was known for the five to seven pounds of weight gain in just the month of December just in the month of December, five to, and I'm a five foot, not quite too tall woman. That adds up, right? And that was because the season of giving in a physician's office was patients, specialists, a hospital, whatever, just delivering food. Most of it was homemade or pastries. And yeah, there was some fruit, but you know what's really easy when you walk from one room across the hall to the next room, and you got to pass the area that all the food is sitting in because it was right at the front desk. It's much easier to pick up a cookie and put it in your mouth than it is to take an apple and bite into it and go into another room. And so I spent weeks during the holiday season in my past mindlessly eating back and, oh, that looks good. And, just, and not even thinking, just not being present. Um, and then as soon as you taste one thing, you know what happens. You got to have more, right? So um, this, this time of year is something that I'm actually always looking forward to. All of my children's birthdays are in the fall, the holidays, the decorations. Um, and uh, sorry, I got distracted by a Zoom thing. Um, and I thought it would be great to start talking a little bit about why do we struggle and what are some tips regarding nutrition and hydration during the season? So Walt, take it away. So I think everybody, what we think about when we think about holidays and how we can think about the holidays from a healthy perspective is what's, what are we looking to accomplish? What are, what are we, what are we looking to celebrate in the holiday? And so many times I think the holidays become more about the food and less about the people. So what the first thought is, is what's the holiday all about? Um, you know, maybe we need to think about the fact that it's all about the people. And as we talk uh, a little bit in a few minutes about the idea of Halloween's, which is the first holiday that kicks it all off, um, where we think of trick-or-treaters, we all can think of holiday parties, as Sharon talked about, that may be at the workplace, um, the candy we give out at the workplace, and then the adult parties that may um, be out there for us to participate and enjoy as well. Um, so I would just say that when we think about the holidays, we think about the people, the community, which is one of our core components of our self-care plan is to be with our community um, and, and, and let the food kind of come as it goes. And we can kind of talk about those strategies for success at these events so that um, we enjoy the people and the folks that care the most to us and enjoy the moment as well. Absolutely. Paige, any thoughts on kind of your experiences of when you used to struggle in the past with choices to what you've learned to be able to do now during the season? I mean, same for me working in uh, primary care is uh, we would get just 
probably starting now through Christmas, everybody would be bringing in just trays of cookies for us. And it would be the same thing, line them up. And it, as we're room and patience, you grab a cookie to go get them, you grab a cookie when you bring them back. And it was, you know, cookies. Um, but for Halloween, uh, we were big campers. So we used to have an RV. So we had a good, how many years there? Would you say a good nine years where we, where we camped? Um, At least different RVs and we had a group of people that we would meet up with and Halloween's a big camping season. So the month of October at all the campsites, it's Halloween themed and people go all out and decorate their sites. And I'll never forget the first time we went, we brought like three bags of candy thinking that was gonna be enough. And I'm getting panic text messages for him because I'm taking Ben out trick or treating. He's back at the RV handing out candy. And he's like, we don't have enough. We're running out. I'm like, well, how many pieces are you giving per kid? You know, and it's just, it's insane. Um, and so Ben would come back with all that candy. And then next thing you know, we had a trailer full of candy. Um, so yeah, I, we do it a little different now. Um, the house we're in now, we don't get, it's hit or miss. So some years we'll get a lot. Some years you don't get any. So we have two kids that live next door. I make up big bags for them, put toys in there, put candy in there, and I deliver them or we have them come over, you know, before the rest of the trick or treaters. And then, you know, we're those Scrooges. We shut off the lights and we don't we don't have the candy in the house. We don't want the temptation. So it's not there. Um, and then, you know, again, at work, everybody brings the ones that the stuff that they don't want their kids to eat and dump it in the break room. But I've learned I. I don't even crave it really anymore. I just, I walk away from it. So, whereas before I'd eat six Reese's peanut butter cups from the break room to triage room and I, and mindless, you don't even realize you're doing it. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, when you think about the holiday season and nutrition and hydration, um, some things that come to mind is when I talk about the month of December, right. Uh, as that example for myself, um, I'm not into real Halloween candies generally, so it's not as big a struggle for me. Um, but I celebrated it like what I call the holla month, right? So it's the holiday season. And it, mentally we think, oh, I can do whatever we want. I have to have the pie here and the cookie there and the grandma's thing here and the Halloween candy there. And you can't let it go to waste. So you might as well eat it, right? Well, it's not the holla month. It's the holidays. And so for most people, there's maybe five or six days that they're celebrating with family, with traditions, with friends. And in our habits of healthy eating and hydration, we eat six times a day. So if you do the math, and I'm not going to do it right now, I have to use my calculator, but if you eat six times a day between October 31st and December 31st, that's a lot of meals that you can make a choice to be healthy have a plan to be healthy. And then those five, six, seven events, the holiday party at the work, the school party, the Halloween party, the Thanksgiving, those are just days. So if you're choosing to do something that's traditional and everybody does it in your family, it's okay because those five or six days are not going to create a state of unhealth. Whereas the, the idea of it's the season, it's all the foods out. It's your choice whether you take it and, and, and enjoy it, right? Um, you know, Halloween in, in my world, my kids all have food allergies. So we'd have to dissect every single item. Um, and I don't know what happened. Walt and I were talking earlier. Halloween, when I was growing up, I got one piece of candy from somebody. And the best house that I would, would go to, which was literally about seven houses down, one direction from where I grew up. He was a dentist and he always gave us coins. He gave us money. Now, it probably doesn't mean much to kids these days, but now all of a sudden we feel like all of the kids who show up at our house, they have to get three, four or five pieces of candy. That's not helping the community, right? It's helping the community get large, but not the community at large, right? And so um, when, we, when we go through our candy, we go, oh, well, this has something you're allergic to, you can't have it. And then we just kind of give it away. But I think portion, the idea of this is portion control, right? Um, small amounts of things that you might enjoy are just as tasty as if you were to have so much of it that when you push back from the table, you go, oh my God, I've eaten too much. Like 
I never get that feeling anymore. So planning ahead, portion controlling, and identifying that five or six times in the next two months, you might choose to be a little bit less healthy on your nutrition because of traditions and family, religious preferences. That's okay. But Walt, Paige, what else do you have on thoughts of nutrition through the holiday season and Halloween? I, um, like I said, when we started, I, my thought was, you know, what are the strategies that we could employ when we get together um, in large groups to be uh, more focused on the people that we're with and enjoy that time with them? And um, I think that just comes from mapping out a plan, um, thinking about uh, how we're going to incorporate our plan of what we're, we want to do and how much we want to do. Um, you know, and some of the things that we coach, we talk about how before we get together with a large group that we um, eat prior to going, we make sure that we monitor our hydration um, before we arrive so that we're not as tempted to eat as much while we're there. Um, and I think that, you know, some of the things that we talk about in the habits of healthy nutrition, one of the things that, you know, we kind of bandy about is that um, there's a lot to do with food addiction when it comes to maintaining that um, healthy nutrition and weight management. And sometimes the seasonal food, we feel like we have it for such a short amount of time that we have to just gorge ourselves with it because it's going away. It's not going to be there. Um, Whereas we just need to savor the moment and savor the time we spend with those people that mean the most to us and uh, share in the community. I love that. I love that idea that we do tend to like, oh, it's the only time of year you can have. Um, but is it? I mean, if we're healthier, we get to have more holidays every year than if we are to be unhealthy in our choices and have less time in our futures or less health in our life that we can't even get together with our families. Um, in terms of the hydration, which I think is really important, um, Paige, any thoughts on how do you show up or when you're at a social event? Um, some of the things I know I've shared with you about you know, having a, a drink, whether it's a cocktail or a soda is irrelevant, but like, how do you handle healthy hydration during the holiday season? And when I'm in social gatherings. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, you, you, you keep that bottle of water in your dominant hand, right? We talk about this all the time, right? And bottle of water in your dominant hand. So you're less likely to be throwing your hand into the chip dip, right? Um, it, you, if you know you're going into a situation where there's going to be adult beverages, then um, you have a plan in place. You know, you set your limit for what you're going to drink for the night um, and and share your plan with, with your Uber driver that um, this is your, your limit for the night and you try and stick to it. I like it. So if you haven't, you know, tried dominant hand, hold your water, no one is going to ask you if you want a drink if you're holding a drink in your hand, right? And actually, earlier tonight, I spoke to a client, and they're, she's going to go to a the Penn State game, and they're going to be tailgating. We talked about tailgating recently on our one of our Facebook lives. You know, what is it? A koozie? Is that the, the warm thingy? Stick your water bottle in a koozie. No one knows what you're drinking, right? Um, and I think one of the things in terms of being healthy through the holidays is really, um, and Walt touched on this, is the mindset, right? Um, is being a healthy person in this world takes hard work. It shouldn't have to, but if it was easy, wouldn't everybody be healthy already? So we're just hopeful here that we can give you some tips to make it easier for you to go through the holiday season with confidence, with some extra little tools, planning ahead, um, carrying that water, eat before you go to a social event, bring a healthy meal to the social event, have a taste, don't engorge. Um, and you know what? When you run out of candy, turn off your lights. I love that idea. Give out what you buy. 
a great thing. The kids have lots of fun, but as adults, haven't we had our share of the Halloween treats? Like, do we need to continue to have them? We really don't need it, but it, it's a feel good. So how do we help you feel good in the moment um, is, is more about the long-term benefit and the, um, the, what's the word I'm looking for? Pleasure, the long-term uh, satisfaction of being healthier. Um, and knowing that you're gonna you know, run towards 2024 healthier than you ever have before, because you're gonna be more mindful about how the holiday season um, begins next week and how you're gonna show up throughout the next two months. Walt, I'll let you kind of wrap it up for us tonight. So I think that just to review, right? It's the holiday season. Um, the holidays are about the people you're with. Enjoy the people you're with. Enjoy the food you like. Enjoy the beverages you like, but remember to have a good time with the people you care about the most. Take care of the kids, take care of the family. Um, the holidays are a great time. They come around once a year, but we want to be around as they keep coming around. Awesome. All right. So stay tuned. Next week, we're going to talk about another macro habit of ours and how it's important to practice some of these habits throughout the holiday season. And uh, wishing you all a wonderful evening. Happy Halloween.